Hello guys, welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Azan Adeola and on today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to use Topaz Lab plugins. Like all you need to know about Topaz Lab plugins, I will be using it to edit a, an image. So you guys have been asking me to do a tutorial on it. So this is just a full tutorial on how to properly use Topaz Lab plugins in 2023. So before we go further, Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Azan Adeola Photoshop Tutorials. Just go on your YouTube, search the name Azan Adeola, click on it and make sure you subscribe, turn on your notification bell and watch as many videos as you can. Leave your comments and likes on it and share with friends so as to grow the community together. So with that said, we'll just jump straight into the tutorial quickly so this is my photoshop and the image i'm going to be using is this image yeah this image we are going to be using for to pass lab plugins to edit this image together and we'll see the outcome so i'll just drag this image and open drag it to my photoshop panel So this is our image, I'll make a duplicate of it, Ctrl J. If you don't know how to, if you don't know that shortcut, you can right click and select duplicate layer here and click OK. Then the top layer, I will just right click and convert to smart objects. So as everything we are doing will be, we can make adjustments to it later, later on if we make any mistake or also so i'll just go to my filter and locate my topaz lab so i'm going to be using topaz lab and at the same time i'll be using the collection though i'm not doing the it's for the collection i'm just trying to show you how they both work and in and to make a perfect your image look more more attractive so that's what we are going to be doing. We are, I'll be using the collection. I will be using one of the filters in the collection, but I'll show you basically how I use Topaz Lab to make my image stand out. So the first place we are going is my filter, and I'll select Topaz Lab Details, Detail 2. If you don't have Topaz Lab and you need it, just let me know in the comment section. I need Topaz Lab. Just let me know, I'll get it over to you straight up. So, we are going to select our Topaz Lab Bold Detail. This is the one we are selecting, Bold Detail. Then we'll increase the detail, the small detail, like this. I guess this is okay. Should I push this? No, this too much. Yeah, I can push it a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, like 10. Yeah, this is perfect for me. So I'll click OK. So I'll go to my filter again. And I'll go to... is the place I have to use the collection. Then I'll select Viveza 2. If you don't have Viveza, if you don't have any collection, please let me know in the comment section. I'll get that over to you also. Click OK. I'll wait for the image to pop up here later. <laughs> so on this Viveza, the only place we are checking is the structure. We are going to be increasing the structure. Just increase it. Don't overdo it. I normally keep mine at 60, 50, 60, thereabouts. So don't overdo it. So I'll select OK. And yeah, this. I'm getting what I want. Then I will go to filter again and I'll select to pass the noise 5. Yeah, this is my strongest. Select strong and increase. Let me zoom out so you can see properly. So I will increase the overall strength to like, let's say, let me increase it to 1.00 because that is the highest. I need to make it smooth. 
because definitely after this I'm going to be smudging the image and making it stand out so I'll click OK so yeah now this is where the secret lies this is where most of us don't really get the point so after doing this you think I'll just go on to smudge yeah you can go on to smudge but to make it even look more attractive you can what we do what what i normally do is to add the topaz detail again so i'll go to filter again and add another topaz detail too now notice the detail i'm adding now may not be as much as the first one the initial one i did so i'm going to reduce the strength i don't want it to be stuff like this like so let me see before okay i don't like those black spots there lash okay good so i'm just going to work on this okay this is good for me i'm going to click okay so now it's popping up it's popping up that's what i normally do to my image so the next thing i'll do is quickly is just to I'll make a duplicate of this layer, Ctrl J, or you right click and select duplicate image. And what I'll do to this, I'll rasterize layer. After rasterizing the layer, I'll go to my smudge tool. That is the blur tool, sharpen tool, then smudge. Just right click on it, it will bring those options out. So my smudge tool, then I'll select my smudge brush if you don't have the smudge brush just let me know in the comment section i will give it to you yeah this is the smudge brush digital painting or brush you can also join my whatsapp group to make that request whichever way so so i'll just zoom in and zoom in so Many of you have been complaining that you don't know how to smudge, you're having problems smudging images and all that. So probably I will explain better as I'm doing this for you guys. I'm not fast forwarding this and I, I just want you guys to understand it properly and to get the idea behind smudging and all that. So I just want to look at the strength that is not too ash on the skin. Something I can work with. So I guess this 15 is okay. So I'll just go back to start to start, start up with. So the secret behind smudging is that you follow the pattern of the the, you, the human skin has texture. So you have to follow the pattern of the texture of the human face. Like if the if you are trying to paint the forehead, you try to follow the lines you are seeing. You don't just paint the way you want you follow the line carefully that's the secret to smudging and you try to reduce your brush size if not you are going to be cleaning some details that are really needed in your work so i'm just trying to follow the pattern now i'm going right this other one was left yeah I was just driving down left like that so so you just do it carefully patient you don't rush it that and that's one thing most of you guys don't have patience so you most of the time you just rush this stuff and just want to deliver so i'll increase it a little bit to blend this place together and all that so So I'll just do this properly. So I hope you guys get the check. So if you guys are good, then probably maybe I'll just forward this section. Or I'll leave it. I don't know. But let me see. If it doesn't take that much time, then I'll probably leave it. But if it takes too much time, then I'm going to fast forward this part. But just try to get the point that you need to follow the pattern you don't just paint over the skin 
you make sure that the dark parts you paint them together the lighter parts you paint them separately also together so that your image won't just look flat so we are going to so we'll just jump here straight So I need to increase my strength, the strength of my brush to like 20 or 19, yeah. I need to be more fast and uh, yeah, this is better. So. So this this is better this this 19 is better for me so it's not that you can't smudge this image without using to pass lab but you won't really have the same result that we have at the end and even though you have maybe you use like two three hours to achieve that when you smudge but when you use Topaz Lab, it makes your work easy because Topaz Lab tends to help you to make the image pop out, to make the image stand out, to give you this kind of what they call the HD, HDR details on your image. So it makes the whole work easier for you. So I'll just keep pencil over here. So I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see what we are doing. So once we are like this, I'm going to do this upper part also. This part. So you can see the details on the mouse face, like we still retain it even though we are smudging it. All those wrinkles on his face is still there to some extent. So it makes it look more reality, not just Just reduce your brush a little bit to get the details on the eyes. So just do the mouth and you need to zoom in so you get that part carefully. So make sure you don't paint the dark part that is the shadow areas with the light areas so you do them separately so it won't mix up so Okay, yes, we are good with the mouth this way. So 
so what, what else we have to do the years so just quickly please this is not a smudging tutorial this i'm just trying to show you because i've asked, seen so many of you asking me that you don't know how to use the topaz lab or how do i do my use my so i just want to show you it takes time you have to do so many stuff so So we are good. So what I'll just do now is to okay, the second year. Sorry, I'll just quickly do this, and we are good to go. So what I'll do is I'll group these two and control G. That is to group the both, select them and control G to put them in a the group. Then I'll hide them to show you the before and after. So, so things you need to know about using your Topaz Lab is number one: when you use Topaz Lab, you should always make sure your your file your layer is converted to a smart object if not when you make mistakes and at the long run you want to make adjustments you won't be able to make any adjustment if it's not converted to a smart object it's impossible to make corrections so it's needed for you to always convert it into a smart object so that you can edit it easily later you can make any corrections you want to make easily later so that is the essence of that converting to smart objects I just did earlier on so so what I want to do now is I want to add I just want to have a, have a color field to it so I'm going to be using to pass adjust for for that so. sorry I didn't convert that to smart objects so I'll just do it now convert to smart objects because I may decide to change it later so to pass adjust for just click we'll wait for it to load so we can add different color photo pop we can add exposure color stretch you can have me so i'll just look for the one that fits my image best yeah this portrait drama crisp dramatic small details mid details detail so i don't want any <laughs> more detail on my image anymore so i just want a color field so these are what you can use your <coughs> parts to do So I don't think <coughs> I don't think I need any of this. So I'll go back to my <coughs> what I'll do now is if you have if you have your oil paint you can just to make the air coil. But sometimes I advise you guys to just use to pass clean three. If your oil paint is not working or you're having one issue or the other with it, you can just use to pass clean to to find your way through it is it's not 100 percent like oil paint but instead of you leaving it like that you can you can just switch to this it's it's more or less it looks like an oil paint filter so it's a good one so i'm going to be using this i have oil paint on my system and it works properly but for you guys that don't have let's use this for you guys so i'm just showing you that 
you can also create something something early with this so this is what i'm using stylized details so if you can see now the air is coiled everything is coiled but what we just want is just the air and that's all we don't want the face the skin to be coiled so i'll just click ok and that's the essence of using smart objects now i've applied the effect and it affected all the body including the face which we don't want we don't want the face to look oily we only want the air to look oily to look coy so this is why smart objects is good it comes with a smart filter on your when you use filters on your layers it brings out what we call smart filters that smart filter you can then clean which part you don't want and which part you want so now just manually clean it i can do it automatically but i don't want to do that so you can understand what i'm doing i've select the smart filter so what i'll do next is just to pick up my brush make sure it's set on black and i'll just paint over my image carefully or better still i will invert this smart object control i i guess yeah so I've invite, inverted it. If you know how to use layer mask, you should understand this very well. But this is not a layer mask tutorial, so we are not going deep into that. So control I is to invert your layer mask. That is from white to black or from black to white, whichever way. So from I just switched it from white to black, which means I'm telling Photoshop that I want my the topaz clean that I've placed on my layer. To disappear i want it hidden it's not deleted it's just hidden so if i want to reveal any part now i'm just going to use my brush and paint on it white i'm going to paint white on the layer mask and it's going to reveal those portions so i just want to reveal only the air aspect and there's no much air on the mask on this picture we are using so it's not going to take my time that's why i'm using this method so i'll just switch my brush back to white and i'll just paint on the air I'll reduce my brush size reduce it a little bit again then I'll just paint over the air so let me blend the eyelashes the eyelashes or eyebrow whichever one so I just <laughs> paint over it. Yeah, they want the suit also. The probably not all the suits, but the tie. You can do all the suit, but I don't have that time, so I just paint over here. Simple, just have that kind of feel. You understand? So we are good to go. So the next thing I want to do is just to add vibrance to this and. Add vibrance to this and add curves because it's somewhat dark and it's make it bright a little bit. So I just reduce my vibrance a little bit, it's making it, yeah, like this is perfect. It's yeah, there about. So this is perfect now. I'll show you the before and the after. So this is the before. The before image, the different eyes, the diff, original image is looking flat, like flat. It looks dull, flat, but it still looks mature though. Yeah. But the final image looks crisp, crispy, looks, it looks artistic. Yeah. And that's what you want to achieve. We set to pass them so and that is one thing that differentiates my design my designs always have this touch when you see designs that have this touch most of the time it's my designs and and that is one thing that distinguishes me from most graphic designers i work on my image i spend hours on doing that so i just taught you guys how to do that with your topaz lab and your nick collection so if you need nick collection if you need topaz lab just let me know in the comment section or better still join my whatsapp group 
the link will be down in the description box just click and join yeah if you like this video hit on the like button if you are not a subscriber yet make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell yeah so that is all for today guys see you guys next time peace out